Astya is the Sanskrit term for non-stealing. It is a virtue in Jainism. The practice of astya demands that one must not steal, nor have the intent to steal another's property through action, speech, and thoughts. Astya is considered as one of five major vows of Jainism. It is also considered one of ten forms of temperance, virtuous self-restraint, in Indian philosophy. Topic <inaudible> etymology. <inaudible> the word astya is a compound derived from Sanskrit language, where a refers to non and staya refers to practice of stealing or something that can be stolen. Thus, astya means non stealing. <laughs> Jainism In Jainism, it is one of the five vows that all sravakas and sravikas householders as well as monastics must observe. The five transgressions of this vow as mentioned in the Jain text, Tattvarthsutra are "...prompting another to steal, receiving stolen goods, underbuying in a disordered state, using false weights and measures, and deceiving others with artificial or imitation goods." This is explained in the Jain text, Sarvarthasiddhi is translated by S.A. Jain, prompting a person to steal, or prompting him through another or approving of the theft, is the first transgression. The second is receiving stolen goods from a person, whose action has neither been prompted nor approved by the recipient. Receiving or buying goods otherwise than by lawful and just means is an irregularity or a transgression. An attempt to buy precious things very cheaply in a disordered state is the third transgression. Cheating others by the use of false weights and measures in order to obtain more from others and give less to others, is the fourth transgression. Deceiving others with artificial gold, synthetic diamonds and so on, is the fifth transgression. These five are the transgressions of the vow of non-stealing. <inaudible> <inaudible> Hinduism Literature <inaudible> 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 Astya is defined in Hindu scripts as, "...the abstinence, in one's deeds or words or thoughts, from unauthorized appropriation of things of value from another human being." It is a widely discussed virtue in ethical theories of Hinduism. For example, in the Yoga Sutras 2.30, astya non-stealing is listed as the third yamas or virtue of self-restraint, along with ahimsa non-violence, satya non-falsehoods, truthfulness, brahmacharya sexual chastity in one's feelings and actions and aparigraha non-possessiveness, non-craving. Astya is thus one of the five essential restraints yamas, the don'ts, in Hinduism, that with five essential practices niyamas, the dose are suggested for right, virtuous, enlightened living. It is part of ethical theory in Hinduism. Sandilya Upanishad identifies ten yamas forbearances, form of restraint as a virtue in yoga, ahimsa, satya, astya, brahmacharya, daya, arjava, kashama, dhrti, mitahara and sacha. It explains astya as neither taking nor coveting wanting to take another's property through the actions of one's body, speech, or in one's thoughts. Patanali includes astya in his five ethical precepts. The epics too mention astya, abstention from theft, as a virtue. For example, in Shanti Parva of the Mahabharata, astya is declared as part of dharma and ten boundaries of righteous behavior. In Chapter 259 of Moksha Dharma Parva, the Mahabharata explains astya, along with satya, ahimsa, and other virtues, are necessary for the conduct of the affairs of the world. These virtues are part of dharma, the epic explains, and conduct by everyone when consistent with such dharma produce happiness as its fruits. During anarchy, one thief appropriates what belongs to others. The same thief, explains the epic, is upset and demands justice when other thieves, however, rob him of what he has acquired by robbery. This means the thief instinctively feels theft is wrong when he is the victim. Dharma cannot selectively apply or favor a few, it must apply to all. Indignation for offended rights of property and the virtue of astya non-stealing is thus a universal necessity of a good individual and good society, explains the Mahabharata. Numerous minor Sanskrit scholarly commentaries from ancient India also discuss astya. In the Saivite school, for example, Kaundinya's Pankartha Bhasya on Sanskrit scholar Lakhalisa includes astya in its discussion and analysis of virtues. Hindu scriptures exist in many Indian languages. 
For example, Tarukural written between 200 BC and 400 AD, and sometimes called the Tamil Veda, is one of the most cherished classics on Hinduism written in a South Indian language. It discusses the vice of stealing and fraud, dedicating Chapter 29 of Book 1 on virtues to it. Tarukural suggests fraud and stealing creates misery and poverty for everyone. Savaya Subramunia Swami translates Tarukural's first three verses in Chapter 23 as he who wishes not to be scorned by others, guards his own mind against the slightest thought of fraud. The mere thought of sin is sin. Therefore, avoid even the thought of stealing from another. A fortune amassed by fraud may appear to prosper, but will all too soon perish altogether." Further, Tarukural suggests that stealing and deception has a psychological impact on an individual, it states. Men who know nothing but deception die a little, each time they contrive their crooked deeds." Non-stealing is recommended as a virtue in Tarukural. <laughs> Discussion Astia in practice, states Patricia Corner, implies to "...not steal, not cheat, nor unethically manipulate others' property or others for one's own gain." Astia as virtue demands that not only one not steal through one's action, one shouldn't want to encourage cheating through speech or writing, or want to cheat even in one's thinking. Smith states that the virtue of astia arises out of the understanding that all misappropriation is an expression of craving and a feeling of lack of compassion for other beings. To steal or want to steal expresses lack of faith in oneself, one's ability to learn and create property. To steal another's property is also stealing from one's own potential ability to develop. The sutras reason that misappropriation, conspiring to misappropriate or wanting to misappropriate, at its root reflects the sin of loba bad greed, moha material delusion or krata bad anger. Gandhi held ahimsa as essential to the human right to life and liberty without fear, astia as human right to property without fear. Astia follows from ahimsa, in Gandhi's views, because stealing is a form of violence and injury to another person. Astia is not merely theft by action, but it includes theft by intent and theft by manipulation. Persistent exploitation of the weak or poor is a form of astia in one's thought. Topic. Related concepts Dana, that is charity to a deserving person without any expectation in return, is a recommended niyama in Hinduism. The motive behind dana is reversed to that of stealing from others. Dana is a complementary practice to the yamas restraint of astya. Topic: <laughs> Difference from aparigraha. Astya and aparigraha are two of several important virtues in Hinduism and Jainism. They both involve interaction between a person and material world, either as property, fame or ideas, yet astya and aparigraha are different concepts. Astya is the virtue of non-stealing and not wanting to appropriate, or take by force or deceit or exploitation, by deeds or words or thoughts, what is owned by and belongs to someone else. Aparigraha, in contrast, is the virtue of non-possessiveness and non-clinging to one's own property, non-accepting any gifts or particularly improper gifts offered by others, and of non-avarice, non-craving in the motivation of one's deeds, words and thoughts. References Sources Jane, Professor SA 1992 first edition 1960 reality english translation of shrimat pujyapadacharya sarvarthasiddhi second ed jawalamalini trust this article incorporates text from this source which is in the public domain <laughs>